Hello students, I hope you guys are doing fine out there. In our previous video, we have learned about the basic concepts of electricity that is the electric charge, electric current and the potential difference. So let's move forward to our next topic. Now our next topic will be Ohm's law, the resistance and the factors on which the resistance of a conductor depends. So without a further ado, let's get it started. <laughs> law sums up within the current, resistance and voltage. In an electric circuit, the flow of current is directly proportional to the potential difference between the points and inversely proportional to the resistance. Now more the potential difference, more will be the flow of current. More the resistance, lesser will be the flow of current. This is the basic concept of Ohm's law. The Ohm's law in simple words gives us the relationship between the current the voltage and the resistance in the circuit. Now let's understand a quick activity to understand the Ohm's law. We would need a nichrome wire, a voltmeter, an ammeter, three electric cells of very low voltages somewhere in the range between 1 to 1.5 volt. First we form a circuit like this which has just one cell as the source. Here we have a nichrome wire which will be the resistance we have a meter which is connected in series. We also have a voltmeter which is connected in parallel along with a plug key. We close the plug key and note down the few readings. We need to note down the readings in the a meter and in the voltmeter. Let the current and the potential difference be I1 and V1 respectively. In the second case, connect two cells in the circuit like this. Now note the respective readings of a meter and voltmeter. Don't forget the ammeter gives the value of current through the nichrome wire and the voltmeter gives the potential difference across the nichrome wire. Let's say the readings are I2 and V2 respectively. Then repeat the same procedure for the third case. When three cells are used as a source, you will notice as the number of cell increases, the current as well as the voltage increases. But the question is, are they increasing proportionally? To know that, we add an additional column at the right, which calculates the value of V over I for each case. You will notice that the potential difference upon the current in each case will approximately be equal. This tells us that the potential difference V across the ends of a wire is directly proportional to the current flowing through it. This relationship was discovered by German physicist George Simon Ohm in the year 1827. Notice that the resistance here is constant and we also assume that all other factors including the temperature are also constant and this is the Ohm's law. If V is directly proportional to I, it also means that V over I is constant and that constant is nothing but R or the resistance. So now the question is, what is resistance? It is simply the property of the conductor to resist the flow of charges through it. Here, in this experiment, it was constant. The SI units of voltage is volt and the current is ampere. But what's the SI unit of resistance? It's ohm and it is represented by this Greek letter. If the potential difference across two ends of the conductor is one volt, and the current flowing through it is 1 ampere, then the resistance of the conductor will be 1 ohm. Ohm's law is a simple formula that explains the relationship between voltage, resistance and the current. It states that V equals to I into R or voltage equal to amperes into ohms. Here we have shown this formula in a triangular figure. This also shows how the formula can be changed around to calculate for voltage, amperes or resistance. If I ever get confused about how it works, I will simply draw this little diagram and remember that if I cover up the one I am trying to find with my thumb, the other two symbols showing tells me what to do to calculate the answer. As we have understood the Ohm's law, let's move forward to the next topic and that is factors on which the resistance of a conductor depends. 
we know that the resistance in an electric circuit is nothing but it is something that controls the flow of current. If it is more, then the current reading will be lower and if it is less, then the current reading will be higher. It is inversely proportional to the current. Now let's talk more about resistance. What are the factors on which the resistance of a conductor depends? When can we say that the resistance of a conductor is more or less than that of the another? Let's do a small activity to understand this. Take a small electric circuit like this one which has a plug key, a power source and an emitter. In the first case, connect a nichrome wire between any two points in the circuit and let the length of this wire be small case L. Now plug the key and measure the reading in the emitter. Now let's consider the second case. Here we simply double the length of the wire but will keep the thickness same. When you measure the reading you will notice that the current is half of the current measured originally. That is when the length is doubled the current flowing through it will be half. In the third case we replace the wire with a thicker nichrome wire with length L. Now we need to understand this case very well because we are simply increasing the thickness of the wire without changing the original length of the wire. Now if we are increasing the thickness of the wire, it simply means we are increasing the cross sectional area A. Now when you measure the current, you will notice that it will be more than the original current I1. Let's try out one last case. We will be replacing nichrome wire with a copper wire. The length and the cross sectional area will be same as the original wire but the material has changed entirely. When you measure the current you will notice that it is more than I1. Now let us understand each result case by case. Here the table shows an experimental value of different readings of current for different lengths of wire used for their flow. We saw that as the length of the wire increases the current reduces by the same factor. It implies that the current is inversely proportional to the length of the wire and by Ohm's law we know that the current is inversely proportional to the resistance of the conductor. So it implies that the resistance is directly proportional to the length of the wire. That is more the length of the wire more is the resistance. So the length of the wire is one of the factors on which the resistance depends. The third case tells us that is the thickness of the wire increased, the current flowing through it also increased. It implies that the current flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to the cross-sectional area of that conductor, which means that the resistance will be inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the conductor. So it implies that the resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor and inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. If we introduce the constant rho, it can be written like this. It is the constant of proportionality and it is called the electric resistivity of the material of the conductor. In the fourth case, as the nature of the material changes, the current flowing through the conductor also changes. And that's because as the nature of material changes, its electric resistivity also changes. The conductors have lesser electric resistivity than that of alloys and alloys have lesser electric resistivity than insulator. Here nichrome is an alloy whereas copper is a good conductor of electricity and that's why the current reading increased as the material changed to copper. The SI unit of resistivity is ohm meter. How it is ohm meter? The unit of resistance is ohm length of the wire is in meter and the cross sectional area is in meter square. Here cancelling and transposing the units gives us the SI unit of rho as ohm meter. So what we have observed is that the resistance of the conductor depends on the following factors. First the length of the conductor, second the cross sectional area of the conductor and third the nature of the material of the conductor. So that's it for today's lecture. I hope you guys understood the concepts well. If you love this video, give me a like, drop your comments down below and you can share this video to your friends. And if you are new to this channel, 
kindly subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next lecture and as always be creative keep learning